Hello there. My name is Sydney San Carino, a teacher in the Open High School program of Baguio City National High School. In this video, I'll be talking about how to craft a contextualized learning module. This instructional video is divided into two parts. Part 1 will be about the elements of the learning module, and Part 2 will be on some of its technical specifications and mechanics. Now let's proceed directly to Part 1. For better visualization on the elements, I will be incorporating the contents of my learning material quality assured by our division LRMDS entitled Reading Styles, Scanning and Scheming geared to one of the most essential learning competencies prescribed by the Department of Education for Grade 7 English. The learning module can be divided into three parts. We have the cover pages composed of the front cover page and the back cover page. There are also the preliminary pages consisting of the copyright page, preface, acknowledgement, and the table of contents. Lastly, we have the pages that capture the lesson proper. These are your main body pages that consist of the labels, what I need to know, what I know, what's in, what's new, what's in it, what's more, what I have learned, what I can do, assessment, and additional activity. Although not part of the lesson proper, let me include the answer key and reference. Let's look at the cover pages starting with the front outside cover page. On this cover page, you will find the lesson title, the learning area, grade level and learning quarter, a cover art that should reflect the topic of the module, the name of the developer, and the DEPID identifier determining the learning module as owned by the Department of Education. For the back outside cover page, you will only find the feedback box. Now let us look at the inside pages, starting with the preliminary pages. The first is the copyright page. Here, you'll find the heading, the publisher, and the copyright notice, including its year. The next preliminary page is the preface, where it briefly describes the material, the proprietorship, and its purpose. These outline data are also placed on this page. Then follows the acknowledgement page. On this page, the developer is given the opportunity to write a short statement of gratitude to the people who, in one way or another, influence the crafting of his or her learning material. An outline of the workforce behind the development of the module is also written on this page. The last of the preliminary pages is the table of contents. Notice that preliminary pages use lowercase numerals, while the main body pages use Arabic numerals. Let us now tackle the heart of the module, which are the main body pages. But before that, does this look familiar to you? Yes, it's a template of our daily lesson log. Now why am I showing this to you? It's because the lesson sequence of our learning module is somewhat patterned to this. In particular, the learning competency and the procedure section of the DLL. Here is the complete procedure section of our daily lesson log. In principle, these reflect the different elements found on our material, with the insertion of a pretest as the initial activity. The learning resource more or less follows the sequence presented on the DLL, with only part F and part G interchanged on the learning module sequence. Now take a look at their counterparts to our learning resource. By the way, the terms referring to the different learning parts are known as labels. These also have Filipino translations for subjects using Filipino as medium of instruction. To better understand what I am talking about, 
Let us use my learning module in explaining the different labels. Let us study the first label, what I need to know. The section gives a brief introduction of the topic or its content. On the sample module, it says that the scope of the learning material is to develop the reading styles of the learner. It also tells the learning objectives to be developed. In this case, these are to scan for specific information, to scheme for major or central ideas, and to read intensively to find answers to specific questions. It may not have been written on this material, but it is also recommended to include objectives targeting the psychomotor and emotional domains of the learner. Moreover, instructions on how to go about the module should also be recorded. Like what is seen on the example, the learner is instructed to use a separate answer sheet. Furthermore, placed on a table are the labels partnered with their icons and short descriptions for the student to have an overview on what to expect on the different sections. Lastly, it is important that words and language used should be easily understood and must be in conversational manner. This does not apply only to this section, but to the succeeding labels as well. What I know deals with the pre-assessment or the pre-test. This evaluates the learner's knowledge and skills prior to starting the module. It shall contain an instruction telling the learner to proceed or skip the material, like this one. So if a learner correctly answers all the pre-test questions, then he or she may skip studying the learning module. Furthermore, the number of items for the pretest should be aligned with the corresponding key stage. What are these key stages? By description, key stages pertain to the developmental milestones of learners. Key stage 1 refers to kindergarten to grade 3. Key stage 2 is grade 4 to grade 6. Key stage 3, the junior high school or grade 7 to grade 10 and Key Stage 4 refers to the Senior High School or Grade 11 to Grade 12. Therefore, Key Stage 1 shall have 5 test items, Key Stage 2 10 test items, Key Stage 3 15 test items, and Key Stage 4 15 test items as well. Since my learning module is intended for Grade 7 learners, then there are 15 test items for my pretest. Next is the What's In label. This is the review or recall part of our daily lesson log where the teacher connects the topic to a previous lesson. But what if there is no previous lesson connected to the current lesson? Well, what you can do is to introduce a prefatory concept closely related or linked to the topic at hand. Just like what is done on this module, I do not know of any previous lesson linked to the topic on reading styles, especially if this is the first lesson to be tackled on the first quarter. So I have resorted to providing a scenario that would lead to the discussion of the topic. What's new is the section of the module where you establish a purpose for the lesson. This is achieved by telling a story, narrating a situation, or providing an activity. In naming your activities, you can opt for something that is catchy or witty. This conveys a casual, informal tone, making it more likely to be read by the learner. It is important to note that the activities we use on our learning module should start from simple, progressing to complex activities. This learning material, for instance, started with an activity that simply asks the learner to fill in with letters the words presented to complete the statements. Isn't this simple enough as a starting activity? What's in it is the meaning lesson of the module. Think of this as the lecture portion in class where you provide a brief discussion of the lesson. Again, use easy to comprehend words or language. For purpose of emphasis, try to encode technical terms or keywords in bold typeface like what was done to this learning module. 
Typical to a classroom session, after the lecture follows immediately formative assessments to test the understanding of the learner. With emphasis on S at the end of assessments, it should be more than one. Yes, do not be contented with giving one activity on this section. Following the simple to complex logic, start with an activity or assessment that is guided or controlled. Why, you might ask? Because you should not only provide activities or assessments for students to practice, but they should practice correctly. For correct practice to be realized, we start with something that is guided or controlled. Then, an activity or assessment for independent practice follows. Looking at the example, Activity 1, Same or Different, illustrates a Venn diagram. Although there is an assumption that the learner knows how a Venn diagram works, guide questions are still added inside the circles that will remind them where to put the similarity or the difference of ideas presented. Also, take the opportunity to integrate contextualization on your learning material, not only in the section but on any parts. For instance, the use of this infographic material on tourist spots of Baguio City. Do not forget to cite an image that you have used on the same page where you used it. Just like on your daily lesson log, the generalization follows during the end of the lesson. This is labeled as what I have learned. Typically, a question is thrown to a learner and he or she answers verbally. This can also be achieved in your learning module. However, instead of the learner answering orally, he or she writes it down on an answer sheet. Or, like the example here, you can construct a short closed test. What I can do? Hmm, what should you do? Well, you need to think of an activity or a task that would require the learner to apply in real life concerns the topic or competency learned from the learning resource. From the sample module, the learner is instructed to read a newspaper article. This is an ordinary and common action. This is followed by an activity that requires the learner to apply the reading strategies scanning and scheming. By doing so, the objectives of scanning for specific information and scheming for central idea are realized. The assessment is the post-test that aims to validate the concepts learned from the module. Identical to the pre-test, it is also composed of 15 items. Now there is no clear guideline if the post-test should be different from the pre-test. Hence, my post-test is simply a duplicate of my pretest. To end the learning process, an additional activity is required of the learner. This activity serves to fortify the skill or competency studied from the learning material. In this instance, the learner's creative thinking is challenged as he or she creates a social media post that greatly considers scanning and scheming tendencies of individuals who browse social media websites. After the main body pages for the learning process, a dedicated page for the answer key of all the given activities follows. Observe that your answer key should be written upside down using smaller font size, preferably 9 points. You might ask, why is an answer key part of the learning module? Wouldn't the learner jump immediately to the answer key without studying the module from the start? True there is that great possibility. However, since the teacher isn't present physically when the learner works on the module, we try to provide all possible resources to the learner, including the answer key. Try looking at it on another perspective. The answer key is included for the learner to have the opportunity to check how well he or she has done after working on the learning module. The last insight page is the references. This lists all the sources that you have used to complete your learning module. Note that you cite your references using the Chicago Referencing Style 16th edition. So we're done with the elements. This time, let's just go over some technical specifications that will guide you on the format of your learning material. 
With regards to the page setup, the learning module uses A4 for paper size, in portrait mode, with 1 inch margin on all sides, a white background, and ideally for key stages 3 and 4, 16 pages of the body text. Talking about the body text, the heading's font size ranges from 15 to 24 points, subheading 11 to 13 points, and body text 11 to 12 points. You can only use three font types prescribed. These are Arial, Bookman Old Style, and Times to Roman. Consider also the art to text ratio, which is 30% art and 70% text. This applies to the totality of the learning module and not to one page only. Still on the body text, your paragraph formatting should be justified. Also, avoid one word paragraph ending. This is wrong, but this is correct. Just like the images you use on pages of your learning module, graphs and visuals should be cited on the same page. Also, your last page should occupy at least half of the page, and the page number placed on the bottom center. If you are at a loss with the spelling and grammar to follow, consult the Merriam-Webster International Dictionary. Like what I've mentioned earlier, follow the Chicago Manual of Style 16th edition for in-text citation and reference list. When saving your learning module file, you need to follow the prescribed file format. Look at the example below. Take note that V at the end of the file name stands for version followed by a number. If you will submit your module for the first time for quality assurance, then name it as version 1. When it comes back for revision, you rename it to version 2. So that is my discussion on the contextualized learning module. For more information and further clarifications, do not hesitate to consult your division's LRMDS office.